So each, each of these uh, people who, who is here is here for a reason. They're going to tell you a little bit about what they're doing, and um, we'll hear from each of them, and then we'll pick up the program. Thank you. Hello, my name is Angela Thomas, and hopefully my nasally cold won't be a distraction. And I'm here on behalf of labor. I'm the SEIU rep. And as the speakers that have come before me have stated, they have let you know what's going on. Um, and labor's position in this is to hold the line. We are going to fight to maintain your eight-hour day, your breaks, your, your duty-free lunch, your FMLA, things that labor has won for workers all over its history that at this point in time a lot of people are unaware of because they've had it for so long, you know, it's kind of, it's part of the fabric. But now that fabric is in a position to be a little tattered. And I'm encouraging all of you. Last year, I asked you to be your best self. I'm asking you this year to be your best self, but I'm also asking you to be a loving and compassionate best self. Because if you think that this stuff does not apply to you, honey, you need to do a little homework. <laughs> because it does. Luckily for us, here at Peralta, we have medical. But trust me, they've already decided, did they little do, to gut it, take the money. See, that's the little dirty, ugly ways they do things now. They just gut it. Well, what do you think is going to happen to your medical plans when they take all of the money out of the system for Obamacare? People like in this country to maintain their bottom line. That means your premiums are going to go up. Now, I'm not saying that as a threat. That's not why I'm saying this. I'm saying this from the perspective that I started from. You think it doesn't apply to you? You think you shouldn't care for your neighbor and they plight and what they're going through? That's not so. You think you shouldn't care about ICE and the immigrants? Baby, the first day Carlos ain't there to cut my grass, I'm going to have a fit. Trust me. Okay? And, you, you, and we laugh, and I, and I love to say things to make people laugh because things are more palatable when you can kind of laugh. You can take your castor oil better when you got a little something sweet to chase it with. But the truth is, because we, I, I often ask myself, and this is your exercise, if you think you don't care or you shouldn't care or it doesn't apply to you, ask yourself, what would make me leave America? What would be so bad that I think it would be worth me going across the desert, going across the ocean, going someplace where I don't know anybody, can't speak the language for an opportunity? What would life have to be like for me to make that decision? Could I make that decision? Would I have the fortitude and the tenacity then ask yourself, can you or can you not relate to an immigrant? Ask yourself, what would it be like if you didn't have medical and suddenly had a heart attack and you had to eat that bill by yourself? Ask yourself what it would be like to not be able to have housing that you could afford. Ask yourself and then decide because I think a lot of you would decide, yes, it is worth my time, and it is worth the effort for me to write a letter, for me to call my legislator, for me to say something, for me to do something. Because that's all I'm asking you to do. Because we're at a time now in our history where we all got to do something. Because a lot is on the line. There are a lot of you that I know personally a lot of you I will probably get to know as I stay here. But trust me, the best thing about the time that we live in right now, as we used to say, there are no little eyes and big U's. We are at a place where everybody can get in where they fit in. Everybody has a story. Everybody can relate. Everybody. 
This is an everybody movement now. So I'm gonna let you go. Welcome and happy new year. and Good to see everybody. Thanks for coming. And thanks to Miriam's Mora Cantor for organizing spring uh, flex activities. It's been great so far, hasn't it? I'm Ed Jaramillo, president of Peralta Federation of Teachers, AFT Local 1603. Our, our union represents 1,000 full and part-time faculty, librarians, uh, nurses, counselors at all four colleges, and I look forward to working with you in 2017. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the following folks. Uh, would all those um, PFT officers and exec members uh, please stand? I'd like to give a shout out to them. Please stand. These are, your, these are the folks that represent you. They've done a great job for the past year and work on um, trustee election, Prop 55. Thank you. Uh, also like to acknowledge uh, uh, district administrators, the chancellor, thank you. And uh, also uh, acknowledge uh, DAS uh, President Cleavon Smith. I'm looking forward to again working with him in the upcoming year to improve working conditions and professional lives of our members. As you know, PFT has currently been negotiating a three-year con comprehensive contract for the district for the last 16 months. The current contract expired in July 2015. A fair and just settlement is overdue. We'll work to con increase salaries, maintain benefits, we will continue the fight for part-time equity and healthy and improved working conditions for all. Last year, while the PFT's administra administration negotiators and PFT reached a an agreement on several non-economic items, such as evaluations, counselor, counseling scheduling, MOU on non-credit courses, harassment and complaint procedures, no settlement was made on finance compensation or benefits. To PFT's great frustration, even though the state economy has continued to improve, the district claims it's broke. All the while, it continues to expand administrative costs dramatically to tune a 30% increase in administrative cost. Thanks to no smart, small part to faculty sacrifice and union-backed efforts to pass local and statewide tax and bond measures, including the recent passage of Prop 55, the district is in its best financial shape in years. All of the people on the front lines, faculty, staff, full-time and part-time, deserve our fair share of these resources, and PFT will continue the fight to secure them. When it comes to working to conditions, faculty across the district have been increasingly concerned about the deteriorating infrastructure, limited space, and general lack of maintenance. We've reminded the district, our faculty working conditions are our student learning conditions, and broken windows, dirty bathrooms, dried up fountains, uncollected trash, overstuffed faculty offices, et cetera, send a clear message that our colleges are indifferent to our students' needs and faculty needs. Another major PFT concern heading into 2017 are the sanctions imposed on our colleges by the Accrediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges. In the past year, ACCJC has come under close scrutiny by several organizations, including the State Board of Governors, the State Chancellor's Office, and the Federal uh, Crediting, uh, NISICI, and other prominent elected officials. The recent news at San Francisco City College received full accreditation for seven, seven years is greatly welcomed. <laughs> PFT, along with the administration and staff, anxiously, anxiously await the upcoming January-February report and its recommendations. Faculty are well aware that that the challenges we'll be facing in the coming year aren't helped by the steep decline in enrollment we've seen across the state and the district. Peralta has the resources to address the enrollment challenge 
and PFT will work with the Academic Senate to make sure that pedagogy, workload, and working conditions are factored into all efforts to address the falling numbers. In addition to taking care of business in Peralta, PFT will continue to work with the parent unions, our parent unions, California Federation of Teachers, California Labor Federation, and American Federation of Labor to fight any and all efforts by the new presidential administration to weaken union laws and regulations, including new Supreme Court cases like Friedrich's, national right to work legislation, or other anti-union policies. If these anti-union attacks are successful, our ability to organize will be hurt and our workplace rights and worker protections will be weakened for us and other workers throughout the country. We need unity, improved organization, and to stand together to face these challenges. In closing, I'd like to urge faculty to keep up with all this action by attending PFT meetings, getting to know your union reps, and following PFT publications, the Peralta Teacher, eCommunique, and BoardWatch. And remember to start your PFT active year by joining us for our Wednesday afternoon, know your contract, updates, seminar this afternoon in, at 315 in room E254. I look forward to working with you and getting to know more of you in the years ahead. In the year ahead, I wish you a healthy and satisfying year. Have a great semester and thank you for your time. Good morning. Happy New Year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Cleavon Smith, and I am English faculty at um, the in the great English department at Berkeley City College, at the great Berkeley City College in the in the great Peralta Community College District. Um, and uh, Miriam has uh, changed the agenda just a little bit to give me an hour to explain to you what's going on with the District Academic Senate. Uh, <laughs> But the performers to my left are looking at me and shaking their heads and saying no, so we'll get on with their performance. Um, I want to share with you and, and, and speak to you about the District Academic Senate, but first I would like to say that nine years ago, the word hope was not just a campaign slogan. Uh, hope was an essential part of our expression of our humanity. And uh, every day, our students, most of our students who come to our campuses, who take you know, several bus lines to get there, who walk several miles to get to the bus stop, who change a lot of the conditions in their homes, make a lot of sacrifices in their homes, who really, in a lot of ways, uh, separate themselves from their, their family members, their parents, uh, sometimes even their spouses, in, who think that they can't do uh, the work at our colleges that is required of them, who think that they, that they should not hope for a better place for themselves and to, uh, to reach and strive for their dreams. And so uh, the District Academic Senate and the Academic Senate at our four colleges is uh, a place where we can meet our students' hope. Uh, and so I invite all of our faculty to not only uh, think about meeting our students' hope in the classroom, which is a space, which is a wonderful, great space for us to meet their hope, uh, but to also outside of the classroom to participate in the Senate, to bring your voice, to share your best self in our Senate meetings where you can advocate on behalf of our students uh, and, and make us think more fully, more uh, thoroughly about the policies and the procedures that affect their classroom environment and that affect our ability to bring our best selves to our students. And so I would like to thank all of the faculty members, and not just faculty, but also classified staff, because so much of this is together with our class, classified staff. And, and I, I share that sincerely because um, when, my, when I was in college, uh, the only faculty member who expressed any kind of appreciation of my uh, ability in the classroom was my faculty advisor, uh, who was kind of paid to do that, uh, but nobody else did. Uh, but the person that I remember the most, who was most influential in my experience at college, was a person we call Sarge, and uh, he was a custodian at, our, at, our, at my college, and I would see Sarge and if I had had a bad you know, exam, uh, Sar I would try to hide from Sarge. 
because Sarge was who I was accountable to at that school. I was away from, I was a thousand miles away from home. And, and I don't want to go on and on about that, but I just share that to say that uh, we really are trying to work more closely with our classified staff. So faculty, go to your Senate meetings. Classified staff, go to your Senate meetings on your colleges. And, uh, and I'd like to thank all of our faculty who in the past you know, years have been participating on our district committees, uh, who serve as officers at our colleges. And I really want to thank personally uh, the following people, Joseph Belinsky, who is a past president of the District Academic Senate. <laughs> Joseph does so much behind the scenes work that uh, he never gets credit for. He never asks for credit for that, but he does it and he does it really well. Um, the, our vice president of the District Academic Senate, uh, Mario Rivas, Dr. Rivas, who is the Senate president at uh, Merritt. Uh, Dr. Rivas uh, brings an, an incredible, um, you know, like uh, attitude, uh, incredible energy, and, in, and you can tell is a visceral sense of love of our students. Uh, Kelly Purnell at Berkeley City College. She's the Senate president, Berkeley City College. Kelly sits back quietly, then all of a sudden just drops major insight uh, in all of our meetings. Um, Donald Moore, Laney College. He's the president at Laney College. Uh, uh, Donald, uh, this is his first year as president at Laney College and uh, his advocacy for the faculty and for at uh, Laney College and throughout the district is, uh, you know, no one has more passion than Donald does. And uh, Rochelle Olive at the College of Alameda. Um, and she is the president at the College of Alameda and Rochelle likewise uh, brings a perspective that is, you know, invaluable to us and for us. Uh, and so support your Senate presidents at your colleges. Find out when your Senate meetings actually are. The District Academic Senate meets on the first and third Tuesdays of each month in the district boardroom, unless um, there is uh, another event happening there, and then we go over to, uh, to uh, general services usually. So every second, I'm sorry, first and third Tuesdays at 2.30 to 4.30, please join us. All are welcome, all are welcome to participate. And, uh, and we look forward to working with you throughout the year. Take care. My name is Peter Brown. I teach machine technology here at Laney. This is really for Laney folks, uh, not to exclude anyone else, but uh, I'm working with the Laney campus reps. I am, I'm sorry, I am your Peralta Federation of Teachers CTE rep. So if you teach a vocational or CTE course, I am your representative for issues that come up relative to that. Uh, this announcement is about a Laney campus chapter meeting because I'm working with our Laney uh, campus reps, uh, Ms. Helen Curry of uh, cosmetology and um, uh, Ann McMurdo, one of our great counselors. They are your campus PFT reps. Neither of them was able to be here today, but on Friday we're hosting a short informal PFT Laney chapter meeting and our sole purpose and goal is to establish, <clears throat> excuse me, how the Laney chapter is going to be transparent, accessible, effective, and really work for all of us the way we want it to be this year. And that will be a discussion. So it'll be about how, how many times you want to meet and when and how we're going to do that and how we're going to communicate the best and develop our networks. That's it. Good morning, until Norma comes, this, my name is Jennifer Benford Seibert, and I'm here to announce the workshop I'm doing this afternoon with the Benefits Office staff, entitled Benefits of Belonging. How many of my part-time hourly faculty are out in the audience? Or if you are new to Peralta, or perhaps just want a refresher or an update on what's going on in 216-17 with our benefits, come to room two, E200 from three to four, and you'll get an update and find out about the benefits of belonging, not just the medical, not just the dental, but some of the fun fringes as well. At our table outside, we have a representative from JFK to enlighten you about some of our partnership opportunities. So have a good afternoon and stay dry. All right, well, Vice Chancellor Norma Ambrice is not here, but I do want to tell you she has some really, really, really important information about rosters and submitting rosters. And it's kind of scary information about how much money we all, our district, is losing when people don't submit their rosters online properly. 
Mm. So there's a workshop that she's offering this afternoon. Look in your program. There are lots of great workshops this afternoon. And now I'm going to hand it over to Jeff Heyman, who's going to talk about some simple ways that we can boost enrollment for our classes. So I'm Jeff Heyman. I'm that guy up there. I work in the public information department. I think I know most everybody in this room, but in case I don't, that's me. So uh, in pa I want me to I'm going to take 30 seconds to tell you what we do in public information and then get out your notepads or your iPad or your phone because I'm going to have some ideas how we can all work together to increase enrollment. So as we know, enrollment's down. We do do in the public information department, we have a task force made up of folks from all the colleges that help us design uh, advertising plans. And this, this semester we did uh, bus advertising. You may have seen some of the AC Transit buses and the shelters. We've done billboards. We've done a TV spot produced by Peralta TV. Postcards mailed to houses. Um, and the TV spot was on KTVU channel too, which was, which was really, really nice. If you want to get involved in that task force and help us uh, you know, inform the kind of campaigns that, that we do that can help your classes and build enrollment generally, Send me an email, we'll get you on the task force list. Now, what's interesting about that is we do surveys every semester, and we just did one for fall. And 24% of our students say that the advertising campaign, those billboards, buses, TV, 24% uh, say it either influenced their decision or extremely influenced their decision to attend a Peralta College. So that's great, but that's 24%. So all of us have to kind of do stuff to, to try and get enrollment up. And you know, it's, it, it is a statewide phenomenon when the, and we all know this, we've been working at community colleges long enough, when the economy's good, enrollment goes down. And in the Bay Area, the economy's pretty good right now. But there's still stuff we can do. Now, I also co-teach the social media class in the journalism department here at Laney with Scott Strain. I think he's back there, I saw him earlier. And these are some of the techniques that we use to help boost enrollment for our class. So these are things that I've, that I've done, so I'm not asking you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. So here's one thing. Who here is on social media? I'm going to start with that. Nobody. Great. Oh, I, oh. All right. Now, how many of you, though, use social media for your class or in your class? Okay. So that's interesting. So not so many folks. I got to tell you, as we have seen, and I'm not going to even comment on the presidential election, but I'll just say, as we have seen in the last presidential election, social media is huge. And I'm not going to come up here and be a social media guru and say, you've got to be on it. But I'm telling you, that is the single best way to reach potential students for your class. Now, we all have privacy concerns, more so than we did a couple of years ago. So, you know, I'm not saying use your personal Facebook or Twitter account to go out there and contact students. But you should have a, either a professional, you know, social media site or at least one for your class. It's really, really vital. And by doing that, what we'll do, because we have a very, we have a large array of social media um, sites that we manage at the district and the colleges have them too, you can amplify your, you may say, well, now who's going to look at my Twitter feed? Well, guess what? We'll amplify it for you. And we have thousands of followers. So if you get on Twitter for your class, just make it, you know, it's free. That's the best part. It is free. If you get on Twitter and say, hey, whatever class it is, you know, I, I teach math and we're going to be doing some fun stuff, throw a couple of pictures up there. Make sure you use a hashtag. Everyone know what a hashtag is? Okay. So use a hashtag and you will find other uh, groups that, that use hashtags, you know, hashtag math laney, hashtag whatever. You can really go far with that. And make sure you tag us at Peralta Colleges, at Laney College. Then that goes out to all the followers. So we did that and, and we get a really good response. I, I, you know, I'll do a, during the course of the semester, I'm going to do a, a larger workshop on using social media. And I've done a video which you can find on my YouTube page. Um, about that, but, but for now, just think about doing that, and if you need help, email me. We'll help amplify that and get the word out. Okay, now another real simple thing to do, and this may sound sort of silly, but uh, it really works. How many of you have listed your particular class on Craigslist? All right, and I've, I've seen Marla's. Okay, don't laugh, because I did it. I do it every semester for the social media class. I get five people. Now, five people isn't a lot, but if everybody got five more people on Craigslist, hey, we'd be looking at some enrollment increase. Again, best thing, it's free. So you go to the community section, events, 
list your class. So write up a little thing. Do it right now. Classes start next week. I'm telling you, you will get people in there. If you don't, I'll give you your money back. Um, oh, it's free. So, <laughs> All right. So now with that said, here's another kind of no-brainer that's simple, and this is really old school. So we'll go from, you know, social media and all that. Flyers. How many people do flyers? Wow. Well, I, I swear I thought I, every single hand would go up. So here's what I did one year in, in the social media class. We did flyers, and I went. And the first week of class, I went over to the financial aid office. I wandered around the quad here, and I said, "Hey, do you guys need a class for?" And they go, "What? What? What, what prerequisites that?" And, and I'll show it to them. They go, "Oh yeah, I need that. I got six people on that one, just wandering around. Three of them dropped out later, but that's okay. So, but I, I'm serious. Do the flyers." Get them out there, and you can use the flyers on social media. You can attach them to Craigslist. It's a really good way to do it. If you need help with the flyers, work with your college PIO or us. We'll, we'll do some graphics for you. But here's what I need from you in order to do a flyer for you. Again, no-brainer stuff. Who, what, where, and when. I'm not an anthropology specialist like Donald Moore, so I don't know the ins and outs of those classes. So you've got to tell me a little something about it. Put that in there, and we'll, and we'll, and we'll do a flyer for you. Remember one thing. I once saw a flyer on Piedmont Avenue in the bookstore there, that used bookstore. It was great. And, and it was like English, literature, you know, whatever the class number was. You know, we're going to read some great books this semester. I recognized the teacher's name. It said room whatever. And guess what? No college name. So <laughs> like, I knew who it was because I recognized the teacher. Make sure you put the who, what, where, and when. We know it's at Laney College or Merritt College or College of Alameda or Berkeley City College, but they don't know. So make sure you get that on there. Lastly, public service announcements. Everybody familiar with those? Okay, so those are free. It's hit and miss, but you know, it, it, it can help. So one of the things, when you, when you do the, the, your flyer and you send me the who, what, where, and when for the social media stuff and all that, remember, take, a pic take pictures for social media. When you do that, we can easily turn that into a public service announcement. We send it to the radio stations. Some of the TV stations still do it, and they read it at 2 in the morning. But you know what? People who listen to it 2 in the morning, they're anxious. They'll take a class. So you do think about a public service announcement. All I need from you guys is a who, what, where, and when. Email it to me. We'll send it out, and we'll get those things out in the media. And then last, some of you may know that I do a, uh, a column in the local newspapers, the uh, Bay Area News Group papers. I do that column once a month. Send me stuff about your class. Send me stuff about student success, awards you may have gotten, something interesting that's going on in the class. I don't need much. I need three sentences. If, if, if everyone sent me three sentences, I'd have enough columns for 10 years. But it's a great, it's a free thing that we get in the, in the local newspapers. I know people read it because I, I keep track of that on my social media site. Um, and it's, it's a great way to, to talk about classes. I'm going to send around a little list probably tomorrow of all the different services we offer and a sample of the columns so you can see it. Um, but take advantage of it and, and do some of those free little things that you can do because I'm telling you, you get two, three more people in your class, that can push you over. All right, thanks everybody. Okay, good morning, Annette D'Ambrosio, and ma thank you, Miriam, for giving me just a few minutes to give you an accreditation uh, status report. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, the commission met last week to review the reports that we sent to them in October to determine if, in fact, we've met the standards. We have not yet received word from the ACCJC. They have 30 days to respond back to all of us. Uh, in the meantime, the district and the colleges are working together once again to uh, collect evidence and write midterm reports. Those reports are due in March 2018. We need to do those reports no matter what we hear back from the commission, okay? So as soon as we hear back from the ACCJC, we will share what we hope is good news, like the kind of good news that City College got, seven years. I can't wait to re read that report. Uh, and in the meantime, I just want to thank everyone for working together. I really enjoy working uh, with this group. Peralta really is a district that cares about your students, and I thank you. And I think we're going to um, continue to work well, and um, it's, again, it's, it's just a very good place to work. Thanks much. It is 
is my pleasure to invite up to the stage our Chancellor, Joelle C. Laguerre. Uh, before I forget, I, I want to, um, uh, to thank uh, Miriam Samora Cantor for the leadership that she's provided uh, to professional development, faculty development, uh, as well as uh, the committee that she works with. Uh, this may be, um, unless some of you can convince her otherwise, this may be her last professional development um, activity and I'm sure that you agree with me that she has done a tremendous job for Peralta, so let us thank her. <laughs> Often it is behind the scene that you know how hard somebody has worked uh, for something. I want to introduce a couple of uh, uh, new employees. Um, Dr. Um, Dr. Audrey Levy is uh, the new interim president at, uh, at Lenny College. Uh, Dr. Levy, could you please? <laughs> she knows uh, California very well, uh, but she just retired from uh, Lone Star uh, College District in, uh, in Texas, uh, and she's, uh, she's joined us, so we are very grateful uh, for the leadership that she's providing for us for, uh, for Lenny uh, for a few months. Also want to uh, congratulate our own uh, Dr. Timothy Karras, who is the new president at College of Alameda. I have stories that I, I have stories that I can tell you when I went to College of Alameda, and people were nervous. They thought that uh, I was going to choose somebody else. When I mentioned Tim's name, everybody was so excited. Like, uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I feel so smart. That, um, anyway, so I want to uh, thank uh, Trustee uh, Weinstein for being with us. Uh, your remarks were so wonderful. Thank you so much. I know that uh, the first day we met and she shared with me that she's interested, she's exploring the possibility of running for uh, trustee uh, to replace uh, our beloved uh, Sai Gulasa. Um, I, um, I, was, uh, I was really impressed uh, with uh, her background, as well as uh, the level of interest that she, she shared. And as uh, she went on during the process, uh, the things that she wanted to learn about, uh, how uh, she wanted to know the district a whole lot better before she became trustee, uh, was uh, quite heartwarming. So uh, I know you're going to be, you already are, and will continue to be an outstanding trustee for us. So thank you very much again for speaking with us today. Um, I, um, I promise that uh, I'm going to be brief uh, this, uh, this year, uh, actually uh, this semester. Um, Suzanne was looking, I told Suzanne to pick up my um, my remarks for me, that was on my, uh, on, they were on my desk, and she looked at it, she said, I can't find them. And I said, no, they're, they're there. She said, um, the, one, the things that I've seen, I said, yeah, uh, she, she said, this is really short uh, compared to what you've done in the past. Uh, so one of the, the reasons is because I have a whole lot more to share with you, but I write to you, as you know, on a regular basis. One of the issues that was highlighted in my 2015 Chancellor survey, as well as in conversations with many of you in the course of my 18-month uh, tenure, is how the Peralta colleges should work together more effectively and form a more cohesive Peralta educational organization. In this regard, one of the initiatives that I have introduced is to bring our college presidents together twice a month to engage in dialogues on how to achieve not only college, but district-wide un unity and improve effectiveness, all as a vital condition for student success. To extend the spirit of these dialogues further, I have asked two of our four presidents to address you today as part of my presentation and to share some brief remarks with you. Uh, we will first hear from uh, President uh, Rowena Tomenang uh, in her fifth month as our BCC president, 
And next, we will hear from uh, the newest president. Uh, we have Dr. Tim Karras. So I'll uh, ask uh, President Tamaneng to please come forward. Uh, thank you, Chancellor, and how's everybody doing? Good? You have energy? Okay, so be, uh, I'd like to start, I love attending professional development days when I can pick up a community building activity and something that can relax me, and so I want to uh, start and have you all join me, okay? So, stronger together, yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Okay, great. So in the uh, spirit of, um, uh, I think, the theme for today in terms of working together, building relationships, how do we make a stronger Peralta in relation to the strength of our colleges? I wanted to highlight a couple of initiatives that are district-wide as well, um, that are uh, very successful at BCC and I'm looking forward to their development. So next slide. So here I have um, three areas that I wanted to just share with you briefly on the collaborations for student equity, engagement, and success. Uh, learning communities, highlighting a new learning community for us. Additionally, the work that we've been doing around developing the Peralta Promise initiatives. And lastly, what has been mentioned already, the work that's really strong, uh, impactful work that the Undocumented Community Resource Center is doing at Berkeley City College. Next slide. So I'm happy to announce that uh, the district initiative to really develop strong Emoja uh, programs across the four colleges, we have been able to successfully launch our first Emoja Scholars Academy cohort uh, starting past summer in 2016. And as many of you know, for Emoja, it's so successful because the curriculum is very culturally responsive. And we really focus on uh, connecting our students to the African and African American diasporas um, and their history and culture. Additionally, uh, what makes the Emoja program so special at BCC, and I'm sure that Emoja uh, practices this uh, ethic of love and care across the district, uh, is that we also engage our students as full participants in the creation of knowledge. So there's also that student empowerment piece that students are just not repositories of information, they are creators uh, in their communities. And then uh, next slide for Peralta Promise initiatives. Uh, we have, uh, as you know, we've been working on the Peralta Promise and that involves a lot of collaboration and partnerships uh, with our local cities, our local school districts, our community uh, business organizations, and our colleges. So I'm happy to say that for uh, this fall, we did have a pilot come in for the Peralta Promise, Oakland Promise of 17 students. We also are working with West Contra Costa School District for the uh, Richmond Promise. We have 30 students. And then upcoming in fall of 2017, we're launching our Berkeley Promise. And something that I wanted to also highlight in terms of the collaboration that's taking place across the district is that um, as we speak, the four colleges have been working very hard with our grant consultant under the coordination of AVC Tamika Brown, uh, and we are putting in for a California Promise uh, application uh, to help build the infrastructure and support the work that we're doing to keep access and provide access for our students that can't afford it. And then finally, campus and community engagement. It, it's also social justice is a district value and it is a value shared across all four colleges. And so in addition to our college theme of rethink justice, uh, we've been doing program around that uh, since the fall. 
We've also been having great support district-wide, in addition from our trustees, our board members, for our UCRC, our Undocumented Community Resource Center. So I just wanted to highlight uh, uh, the resources that we've been providing in terms of information for undocumented students, and then we had a very big event with Jose Antonio Vargas uh, in the fall that was very powerful, and he had a great dialogue with our students, faculty, and members of the community. So with that, I'll go ahead and um, turn it over to President Karras to share what College of Alameda is working on. All right, well, hello and welcome. Um, I do realize, I believe I might be one of the caboose today's um, presentation. I know lunch is looming, so I'll be brief for you guys. Um, I realize um, all of us in the Peralta family work every day very hard and strive to support our students. That's why we're here. That's why we show up to work. We care about our students and especially our most vulnerable students. We put a lot of time and intentional effort to serving those students. So I really, we all appreciate all the work you do every day, day in, day out, evenings, weekends, mornings, all that to make this happen. And what I'm going to do today is just share four themes of um, projects that we have going on at COA that are helping our most vulnerable students, and they'll be analogous to programs that are happening at all four institutions. So these are some of the items COA is leading on this spring. So um, the first is about transit. Transit is an issue for students. Transit is an issue for some of us, just even to get to work. Um, one item we're able to leverage um, this spring, uniquely in Alameda, is the city is doing a comprehensive transportation plan. So they invited us to the table because we are one of the biggest draws of people to the island. Thousands of cars come every day through the tube. Some of you have um, experienced that. Um, and they want to mitigate that. And so we want to help them mitigate that. And part of that is working with AC Transit, because AC Transit has, um, they had a, um, a tax passed in the fall. And so they're re-looking at their, all their bus lines. So there's things about better connections to BART stations at Fruitvale, here at Merritt, um, and also at the downtown um, Oakland BART station to have shuttles either coming from the BARTs to stops throughout Oakland and Alameda and also express bus line service. So one really exciting one for us in Alameda is an express line that will um, run from the Fruitvale BART station through town all the way to Alameda Point where there's a ferry. Um, so there'll be a through and we want a bus station right at COA of course. Um, so that's one item, so we can go through there. Another one is about access, and um, it was mentioned just um, previously is about the Promise programs. Um, COA, um, we have, um, we did a soft launch last year of the um, Alameda Promise with um, Alameda Unified School District, and we're gonna do a full launch this um, spring. Right now we have 13 students in that Promise program at COA, and then we also have the Peralta Promise where we have 24 current students in there. And so we were looking to expand that and also work with our partners at the other four schools on the California Promise Program grant, which will really leverage some statewide money and grants to really allow us to blossom here at all four schools um, um, to have access to our students. Um, next, food security. Kind of like transportation. If someone's hungry, it's getting towards lunch. Right now, you might not, if you're hungry, you're not thinking about what's Tim's staying right now. You're, you know, like, I need food, I need food. Well, our students, if they're hungry, they're not going to be thinking about their classes every day when they come. They'll come, but their mind is going to be on something else. So one thing we're starting um, this spring in Alameda is we're working with the local food bank, Alameda um, County Food Bank, and we're going to have a mobile food pantry coming to campus. So we'll come to our parking lot. I kind of think of it, I come from library land, think of it as like basically a bookmobile for food. Um, and so you can come and you get the food and you can take it home with you and um, have a nice meal and then come to um, school not hungry. So that's a very exciting thing, and we'll expand that. And I know other colleges are also looking to do that. And then lastly, through the really the um, leadership of our faculty, um, we, as many of the other Peralta schools, we got a basic skills transformation grant. So all four of our schools were lucky in getting those transformation grants, and we are transforming at COA. And the faculty have done a yeoman's job, or yo person's job, I guess, um, in putting through new curriculum in both credit non-credit and redoing the pathways in mathematics, English, and then using our Learning Resource Center for some coursework, especially for students coming from us from the um, adult schools. So we're doing a contextualized mathematics and English, which will be non-credit coursework, and then we're also doing a lot of sequence work with um, stats in math, because that is a um, gateway 
sequence and course in myth mathematics. So I just wanted to highlight that good work. Um, that is all I have from COA from today. So um, thank you very much. And I'll turn it back over to Chancellor. Thank you, Tim, for reminding them that they're, uh, they uh, can be hungry. Uh, I, I'm going to, to go really fast. Uh, so I want to thank our presidents for uh, their remarks and uh, their commitment to their colleges and the district. We certainly need four presidents who are committed to our students who tend uh, to, uh, uh, to our students who tend to attend classes at more than one of our institutions. As I reflect on the past few months, I must say that the fall semester had its turbulent uh, times. For example, Mother Nature provoked Lenny to spring more link leaks. The close, of, uh, the, uh, the close of the semester brought down all power to Merritt College. We had district floods political upheavals too painful to revisit, and the great sadness in our Oakland community over the ghost ship fire and the continued loss of students' lives in our community through violence. Hopefully, spring semester will be less turbulent. But today, I want to draw your attention to persisting Peralta concerns, mostly less drastic than those I just mentioned, that we must address uh, collectively if we are to continue to transform our district in the spirit of an excellent organization, our New Peralta way. As Bill Love, Mark Greenside, and many others would say, great things, great leaders, and great leadership have come out of Peralta. We must continue to work together, uh, find ways to work together to show the world Peralta's intrinsic greatness. I realized that as we moved into the fall 2016 semester, that there were major concerns at Peralta we must uh, examine and address collectively. One leading concern pertains to the number of vice chancellors we have now. Today, I want to say that I have listened to and reflected on your concerns in this matter, and I am committed to, satisfa to satisfactorily uh, uh, to satisfactory, uh, accountability uh, though it may, be, it may mean cuddling some worthwhile initiatives, reducing some of our focus, and doubling the duties of some district administrators. I hope I have not scared our district administrators on that. I'm confident by the fall 2017 semester, you will see a leaner administrative structure at the district level. Another concern is the maintenance of facilities, especially at Laney College. For starters, you should know that the district continues to reduce our work orders. However, a special work group has now uh, convened to address Lenny's issues and has done, done so with great determination and some immediate success. Note that we are certainly committed to address the issues at all our sites and not just Lenny College. But our largest college does have some unique and serious facilities issues we are dealing with. Despite all the work we have done in the past year to address in particular our audit findings uh, cited in our accreditation report, a recent audit report revealed new unwelcome findings pertaining to matters such as incomplete grade and census reports, undocumented positive attendance, and other findings that are costing the district millions of dollars and hours of extra labor. I could complain about the small number of faculty or departments who do not meet their obligations for whatever reasons, but I'm going to take a different uh, path. I want to express my gratitude to those who have turned in their grades, rasters, attendance verification on time. Thank you very much, because <laughs> you have allowed the district and your colleges to receive its state funding share. For those who have had problems with the technology involved in record keeping, we will put assistance at your disposal, and you already saw from uh, Vice Chancellor uh, Embris Galavis the support that we, we have for you. We are only asking that you reach out to get help. I'm striving to have 24 hours support for faculty around the time of grade, raster, and attendance submissions. 
We cannot afford to neglect strict accountability in this area because it is really too costly. I'm calling on all administrators to take on primary ownership of this issue. Not only do these audit shortcomings cause us to lose money, our actions, or lack thereof, are hurting students and hurting the credibility of Peralta. Again, we will make sure that, avail uh, that support is available to faculty members for their rosters, attendance verification, census reports, and grade submission. We are going for 100% accountability for the spring 2017 semester. Please do not be among the few to cause us all to be denied millions of dollars we could receive instead apportionment. Another major concern is, is that transparency in the budget process seems to be lacking, especially regarding Measure B or the parcel tax. I personally intend to work hard on resolving this issue and to make certain that some Measure B funds, for example, will provide budgetary opportunities for faculty to innovate and improve programs. I have proposed that our budget committee examine those districts where transparency exists. Having a transparent and predictable budget for everyone to see is really my goal. Finally, since the fall elections, there has arisen an uneasy feeling in our community uh, among some individuals and groups to include undocumented students, LGBT students, as well as faculty, staff, and students' concern for a number of reasons. Make no mistake that much of what is at stake may not affect you individually, but may affect the well-being of many of our students and many in our community. All of a sudden, for example, some of our students may lose their health care coverage or legislative protections uh, that may be rolled back. We will have some struggles over the next few years. However, I believe strongly in our collective wisdom to overcome them. It's not just us who are afraid. Last night, my wife and I were talking about uh, how many friends uh, are left uh, to our government. And in counting, there were not that many that uh, we have not attacked prior to our new administration. So major world powers, such as uh, Germany, France, and many others, and China, are really concerned about what's coming up for them. So the issues are not just with us, it's uh, worldwide. As you know, as you've already heard, the governing board has passed uh, a resolution addressing the un, uh, unease that many are feeling. And I must say that we cannot allow ourselves to be paralyzed by fear and to lose track of what we are about. We have a political climate that is now radically different than it was in past years. However, this new political climate should prompt us all to teach with even greater purpose and dedication, and to engage our students and our colleagues in meaningful intellectual discussions and activities that invite us to be serious and effective change agents. We are, after all, Americans, and we will uh, thrive despite the most threatening challenges we may face. We, most of us have learned that out of crisis comes opportunities. Let me conclude by articulating once again my vision for the new Peralta Way. This vision may be expressed in terms of a range of commitments that center on five core values. An enlightened Peralta educational leadership dedicated to high academic standards. Rigorous and continuous self-evaluation as routine professional practice done not merely to comply with accreditation standards. Supporting the governing board in its designated role in governance an effective participatory governance process, a determination to continue to strive to close the achievement gap and to ensure demonstrable education success for all students. Realizing the new Peralta Way is a long-term commitment that all of us should be involved in. It should not be as the Chancellor's mantra, but a set of expectations that are normal for a functioning organization. Such a commitment requires patience, a determined attitude, and a willingness to embrace and foster change. 
the district office employees are working to find ways to be more responsive to the Peralta community. District staff members are engaged in a relatively, uh, in a uh, reflective approach to communication led by Professor Mary Denise Jackson and ERP project manager Chioma Nbusi. We continue to work hard to make sure our vendors are paid on time and we are addressing our distance education needs. I thank you for what you do so well. I look forward to a less turbulent and more peaceful and more productive semester for all of us. As we move forward, let us recommit ourselves to the ideal that drew us into education in the first place, transforming lives. Regardless of one's political leanings, we need to at least, at a minimum, continue to support our students and make them feel secure. Again, I want to be clear that it is not only undocumented students who feel insecure, but it is also a lot of protected or non-protected classes. Perhaps in these difficult times, we need to strive to be kinder and gentler and more supportive to all of us. Be confident that our political leaders will benefit from our feedback to them and be resolved that each of us must go out of our way to ensure that America's greatness rests on an informed, educated, compassionate, and responsible citizenship. By no means should we count ourselves out lest we lose the progress we have made over the last few decades. Yes, we can. Thank you. Mm -hmm.